I was inspired by birds. They're the ones that go out and build nests without permission. I used the materials around me, whatever was here, recycled to do this. No matter where I live in this country, that's how I would approach it. What's there, what's available, what's recyclable. And most of what I've done here, 60% has come through trade and barter with my art as a carver and my labor. My dream was to live out and to grow my own food, to live as self-sufficiently as possible and get a sense of living in the rhythms of nature. Nature was inspiration to me and I can't imagine not living in nature. The two of us together were a team on this project and, and we both agreed and talked to each other about the, what we wanted to do for a short period of time and then after 10 years, we'll look at each other and decide whether we wanted to keep doing it or not. Because it takes all your money, all your time, and everything you have to do it. After 10 years, we looked at each other and said, yeah, let's keep going. So we're 27 years at it and really enjoying where it's going. We talked the first day we met about wanting to live out and wanting to explore areas. We did an exchange with a friend, stayed in a cabin not far from here and a storm blew in the wood that started the building of our house. We built it on shore there. And then 1992, we moved into the cove. When we first started, the important thing, of course, was to have a roof over our head. So we built the house, which was half the size it is now. Because I am a dancer, I did need a place to move. So the next thing was the dance floor because I knew I wanted to grow my own food, then everything began to expand as my garden expanded. So started with a salad garden, that was one float, <laughs> and then expanded, to, oh, I want to grow more than salad, so that was another float, and it just kept going like that. The greenhouses, there's four of them, because when you're trying to grow food on the water, you have the coolness coming from underneath, as well as the strong winds that we have. So plants needed extra protection, especially getting started. And certain plants need to stay in the greenhouse, like tomatoes, peppers, for example, that need extra heat. And now I can pretty much grow everything I want with the greenhouses. The gallery building came into it because we always wanted to have a place to display our artwork other than taking it to town in other people's galleries. When you're displaying your work in other people's galleries, you have to pay a large percentage. This way, we don't have to pay any percentage to anyone. So we really enjoy having that. The beach was Wayne's idea. Wayne had the dream of having a place where at the end of our day, we could just sit and relax. And I have to say that I really enjoy it, and I really enjoy, at the end of the day, having that place to go and sit. The fire pit area adds a nice ambiance, especially when family and friends are here, because we can sit around the campfire in the evening. Our two floating boat houses are really an important thing on the West Coast because it rains very hard, and so that eliminated having to bail boats constantly and uh, keeps your motors in, in better shape. The lighthouse building has an actual light up top and has an extra shower in it for family and friends who come to visit. We have bathtub and shower in the house that Wayne made and our candle factory building where we still make our candles. I'm floating two million pounds. I get the joy of engineering it. And it took us 10 years to accumulate the material to what it is now. It's no secret, I built my own island. But the idea, can you live out of the forest and off the land and on the water and not disturb and keep the biodiversity around you was really a dream of mine to be part of nature because it's, it's nature's been my guide on how to live with it. We are floating completely on recycled fish farm material. So we didn't always float on that. We went many years where we were on wood structures, but Wayne got an opportunity uh, 
from the fish farm people. They needed to get rid of it and they were happy for him to take it. And then that opened up a whole new world of security for us really because when it's wood it rots and after a while you have to replace it. Now we have armored styrofoam which is already underneath the systems was already placed there and it lasts indefinitely. It makes it very secure for us and the metal based systems also make it better for us in terms of durability when we have storms and the way Wayne has us tied into shore he has us tied in with big ropes in a spider web formation so when we get hit by the wind we move back and forth all in one piece rather than the buildings bumping against each other that was learning by doing we spent two years <laughs> bumping together up in the middle of the night in storms and then we figured that out so that was really good <laughs> we still have storm damage but we just consider that storm damage is part of our lifestyle and we use it as inspiration to change because the whole place is a big installation art piece that transforms in some way every year and usually winter storms cause the inspiration for that. <laughs> well, one of the opportunities of this site, this area, was the water was above me. It's a lake above me. I looked for that everywhere on the coast. Where is a place above us? There was a water source, which means I could pipe from there into my house without pumps or anything, gravity-fed water. And that's what I did. I have a four-inch pipe coming down in here, and that allowed us to have the garden. It was the water. We have been gifted a Go Green wastewater system, which will completely microbial purify everything. And prior to this, we used a, a tank. You can see where everything goes into. It gets whipped up as a soup and then dumped out in big water. But now we won't even have to do that. It will be transformed, purified. We compost things that are organic. We burn things that can be burned. And so that we're taking as little as possible and, to and recycling in town. Yeah, bring as yeah. little here as possible. And bring as little out, yeah. We don't have to go to town very often. I get help from my son. I used to go every couple of weeks because of mail, but now I only go when I want pop chips and candy. We all need power. I have two types, uh, solar and, and backup generator. The thing about energy these days is it's intermittent no matter what it is. So you got to have a backup generator. My solar system is 25 years old, so it only works when the sun hits it. But the new solar systems work under cloudy skies and everything. So I use both, and right now we're on solar. I just love it. But, uh, you know, it both takes maintenance. So I recommend somebody start with a nice little economic little generator, a Honda. I hate to say brands, but they've been very good. And that's what I use for backup energy. The way we heat our places is firewood, and I live in the temperate rainforest. We pick it up off the beaches after it's pushed out of the rivers. We never have to cut in the forest or anything. And we go through a lot of wood. I live. I have a single-walled house, so I don't have molds or mildew. It's not sealed. I have one-inch insulation so that the air breathes, and I don't get mold and mildew problems, which is very difficult here because in the winter it's a lot of rain. Nothing dries out, and I make sure my house dries from the inside out so I don't have that encroachment but I use a lot more wood than most do. In nature, I can catch and eat anything I want, but I just fish. I trade for my other things, because I'm, I'm not a vegetarian. I do eat certain meats, and I do eat fish, and crab, and prawns. I am a vegetarian. I grow fava beans, I grow peas, uh, this year I grew corn, quinoa, and black beans. So I'm growing a lot of things that provide protein by doing complementary protein. If everything collapsed, we'd be okay. We could, we could make it. Yeah. Because money has never been the important thing to either Wayne and I, neither of us have ever given each other grief over financial situations. And we've been many times when we've been down to our last 20 cents and we both just 
relax about it and we just say, okay, we're going to work on a carving, we're going to create something and we're going to go to town and see if we can sell it. And because we believed in that, it has always worked. So we've had many times when we're right down to nothing, but we know we're going to be okay and sure enough, enough comes in to keep us going. I was raised by a mother who was an anti-aircraft gunner. She used to say, sunshine, life is hard, and then it gets harder. And if you understand that, you'll do fine in this job. It's not an easy life. It's hard work, and you have to do the work. If you don't do the work, then you can't live this way. It is work of choice, so I feel very blessed. I'm deeply grateful to be living how I'm living. I'm deeply grateful for Wayne and I and our partnership and willingness to do this. Deeply grateful for what we have created and what we're living on. We don't recommend everyone do this. We recommend everyone do their own dream. And there's many dreams and actually there's too many, too much choice. But this is one where you can see where you can, how far one can go with two people. And it's possible that you can create a floating dream. But we say create your own. There's many ways of doing that. Waking up in the morning, looking out, seeing water all around me, seeing incredible forest all around me, seeing wildlife all around me, Seeing the beauty of what we've created to add to that is just an incredible thing to wake up to. I can't imagine living any other way. We live to the rhythms of the moon and the tide out here, not to the rhythms of corporate and business. And that is vital to me. It is our dream to live here till the end of our days. That is what we want and we are working in every way we can to make that possible. We will have to uh, build another house at some point. This house as a float house has done amazingly well to last 27 years, most only last 10. Uh, but we will have to because it starts to rot from the bottom up and we didn't have the technology that we have out uh, with the recycled fish farm systems at that time. So when we rebuild this time, we'll have that type of technology underneath. So it will have a very long life. Every once in a while, I meander out onto the dance floor, out into that full moon and say, beam me up, Scotty, I'm ready. <laughs> but I'm here until then. <laughs> <laughs> Please share this video if you liked it. Also be sure to subscribe to Exploring Alternatives and check out our playlists for more stories like this. Thanks for watching.